my voice is going. Can you hear it? But yeah, I hate this book so freaking much. Okay. That was a bit aggressive. I'm sorry. I'll calm down. <laughs> Hi and welcome back to my booktube channel. My name is Sam. I hope you can hear me from over here. We have a little bit of a different setup, but today we're going to be doing a video that I've been so excited to do. I've literally been counting down the days until I could do this video. Um, but basically, as you can tell from the title, today I'm going to be giving you a tour of my lovely bookshelves right here. Um, because I also, in the second half, there'll be chapter tied tours. If you're just here for the unhaul, you can skip ahead. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour of what it are now because I want to do a giant refresh. I want to get rid of at least 50 books is my goal. I want to unhaul 50 books in this video. Um, I have a gigantic stack, which you can kind of see down here. I feel like a weatherman. Um, I have a giant stack recently read that's overflowing. It's three stacks wide. Um, so hopefully that'll boost the numbers, but I also want to get rid of some books off the shelves. So yeah, I'm so excited. So let's just dive straight into this. If you are excited, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Tell me about books you've unheard. If you agree, disagree with any of my picks that I'm going to be getting rid of, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, if you want to see the tour, I'll get on with that now. But if you want to see just the unhaul, then feel free to skip ahead. There'll be the chapter titles in the bar thing <laughs> just skip to where it says at all okay let's get into the bookshelf tour. okay so i even have a little pointer it's a, it's a back scratcher but it's a pointer and can, can you even see this is this even gonna work i'm gonna use it anyway um so i thought the best way to start this would be starting at the top row which is in frame i think um but basically the top row which is this very top bit above the shelf I dedicated to my manga and graphic novel collection because initially they were on like a shelf down here but they just there were so many and they wouldn't fit on one shelf so I thought why not just dedicate the top of the shelf to that so that's what we have and we kind of have a colour theme going on at the top we have the white ones up in this top corner with Tokyo Ghoul I have the two series Tokyo Ghoul and Tokyo Ghoul RE um, and they can like make up a white background for these Umbrella Academy from Co Pops. I love the Umbrella Academy. If you have not watched it, go watch it on Netflix. It's like kooky, it's crazy, and the fourth and final season is out on uh, August 8th. So go catch up and tell me all about the Umbrella Academy. I love it so much. Anyway, so I've got all the Funko Pops of the family members here, the siblings, and then obviously Tokyo Ghoul behind it. We have a bit of Junju Ito and some graphic novels. I'm not going to go into exhaustive detail here, um, just to like an overview. And then we have the middle section here which is kind of like I'm, I'm gonna stop using this I feel like you can't see it um but we have the middle section here which is my My Hero Academia um which I'm kind of going off like it's just going on and on for ages and um, then we have Spy Family which oh, Spy Family one of the best mangas I've read not my favorite but definitely like I think it's my second favorite probably Spy Family check it out um, and then we move into kind of the darker section. These are where the black and the grey books are. Uh, we have the special edition Six of Crows from like ages ago. We have my all-time favourite manga series, Alice in Borderlands. I, I'm still yet to watch the show. I'm a bit sceptical. Uh, but my all-time favourite manga series that I've read so far has been Alice in Borderlands. Uh, and then we move on. Got a bit of Death Note. Got the first three black volumes. Um, and then... <laughs> Then we have my Walking Dead shrine up in this top corner. As you can see, we have Glenn, we have a Funko, not Funko Pop, a Royal Bobbles pop of Glenn, Carol and Michonne. And this is kind of my Walking Dead shrine because if you're new here or you just don't know this about me, my favourite all-time show is The Walking Dead with Glenn Reed being my all-time favourite fictional character. No one will top that man for me. Um, but yeah, The Walking Dead has probably the majority of my heart. Um, so yeah, check out The Walking Dead if you haven't watched that. I'm just going to keep recommending stuff here. Um, but yeah, I have to have a Walking Dead shrine. My friend Alona, she gets me like Walking Dead merch every now and then to add to it. Like I've got a hat from the games. I've got a, like an S thing. Like keep, keep, keep feeding my obsession Alona. <laughs> but yeah, that is the top shelf. Uh, well, top shelf, but the top of the bookshelf. Um, so then we're going to move on to this first row of shelves. This one is kind of more general just like vibes um besides the middle one so this one is kind of like a fantasy vibe we have uh, all my Lee Bardugo books up here we have some Victoria not Victoria Aveyard uh Victoria Schwab books here we have the darkest 
uh, Dark Shade of Magic series up here. We also have Final Girls Support Group, which I absolutely adore. But yeah, this is kind of a fantasy-esque shelf with some kind of hardbacks that wouldn't fit anywhere else. Then in the middle, okay, this is my favourite shelf right here. Because it's like the perfect centrepiece for like these bookshelves. In the middle, it's at the top and it is godly because this is Rick Wright Auden. Mr. Rick Wright Auden, Percy Jackson. <laughs> um, and here I just kind of have all my Percy Jackson and Rick Wright Auden books. Uh, they're in order of how you should read them. I might do a video on that eventually. Um, so we have King Conquer, which I put at the start because it's not really connected to Percy Jackson um, universe apart from the short story. Then Percy Jackson, Here's the Roman Puss, Magnus Chase and Trials of Apollo. So this is a nice centerpiece and I really like that it goes up and then down so like a pyramid. Anyway, then we have this shelf which I like to call the girly pop shelf, mainly in reference to a reel I did ages ago, it kind of just stuck in my head, but I did a reel with different kind of like uh, sounds saying this is how queer books would say they're gay. Um, and Heartstopper here I put as the oh girly pop one and I just think that fits so well. So this is kind of my girly pop shelf and I really like it. It has all my Taylor, Jenkin, Taylor Jenkins Reid books. You're going to see how much I can't talk in this video. Uh, we have my Taylor Jenkins Reid uh, books up here. We have Alice Oseman and then we have Becky Alatelli. We also have a few other books like Aristotle and Dante and uh, Yesterday's History up here. So this is kind of the girly pop nice queer shelf. Uh, then we have this entire row, which I'm blocking at the moment. This second row down was mainly put together to kind of complement the rainbow shelf beneath it. So this shelf is all the dark and the black books. They're mainly fantasy, to be honest with you. Um, shelves, <laughs> books, I must be. Uh, they're all the black books, basically. It's a black shelf uh, with all the black spines and dark spines all together to complement the rainbow. So I'll start over here for a change. We have uh, Throne of Glass. We have Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. We have a little book nook that I made that I might zoom in on in a minute. Um, but yeah, this is really clunky. It came as like an incomplete set, so I did my best. Um, and then we also have some miscellaneous ones like Black Sun, shout out to Jayla at La La Loves Lit because that's such a good recommendation. Um, so yeah, Black Sun, check it out, Rebecca Roanhorse. That That's my little insert for Jayla there. Um, then we also have like Children of Blood and Bone, Dread Nation, Legend Born, still need to read them. <laughs> then in the very middle we have my Shadowhunter shelf. Shadowhunters, Cassie Clare. I do want to do kind of a series like I've done with Sarah J Mass revisiting these books because it's been a couple of years so I kind of want to go back and see how well they hold up to kind of like 20 year old me now. Um, 21 in August. Um, so that's my Shadowhunter shelf. Then this one is mainly Alexander Bracken's shelf. I'm still yet to read a majority of her books but uh, the ones I have read, the Darkest Mind series, like oh, absolutely loved them growing up. I remember saying the plot of The Darkest Minds in secondary school with like all oh, these kids with powers get set, sent to camps and they're kind of controlled by the government and everyone was like are you okay? Um, but yeah there's my Alexander Bracken shelf. We also have uh, Babel or Babel however you want to say it up here. Okay I'm in that bed. Uh, and then when we move a row below like I said this is a rainbow shelf. We go from red yellow i'm not going to say the last of the rainbow because i'm i hope you know the rainbow um but yeah this is the rainbow shelf i think rainbow shelves are really good ways to kind of hide all your miscellaneous standalone books any ones that aren't in a series or where you've only got like one or two in the series and they don't really like go together on the shelf you just put them in a rainbow just put them in a rainbow and then it looks organized even though there are loads of miscellaneous books um, also, the people that slander, people that organise their entire bookshelves in uh, in rainbow order, in colour order, shame on you. Stop shaming people for their bookshelves. Let people organise by colour if they want to, okay? That really annoys me. I see so many, like, um, Instagram reels where people are like, oh, look at this shelf organised in colour. I'm like, it looks great. What are you on about? Anyway, so if you organise your bookshelf by colour, respect, okay? Um, so yeah, this is my rainbow shelf. This is probably where most of my unhaul books are going to come from, from like the main shelves, is the shelf because it's full of like, yeah. Then we move on to the bottom three. You can only see these bottom two here, but there's 
it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> these are the less organized shelves. These are the ones where there's like one or two individual cells that like make sense as a shelf, but then the rest are just, I threw the books on because I had nowhere else to put them. Um, so we have this one, I threw things on, it's kind of mostly aimed to be fantasy, but there are some contemporary books on there. Um, we don't talk about that one. Uh, then we have this middle one, which is kind of organized. It's fantasy books. You've got uh, Adora Smoke and Bone. You've got The Cruel Prince. You've got The Raven Boys. It's a little fantasy shelf. Then we have this one. Now, if you've been with me for a while or you just hear my slander, I hate white spine books. Like books with white spines, I hate because they just stand out so much on your bookshelf. Like if I had a white spine like here, it would just stand out. It'd be the first thing you see. And I hate that. So I isolate <laughs> most of my white spine books onto this shelf and I call it the white spine shelf. And it's self-explanatory really. It's where all the white spines are. Yeah, I try to make it look aesthetic. I have like a little bust that I got in, um, in Florence of David. You can't really see it, but it's like nice professional white kind of thing. So it kind of brings it together, but... I also have a dinosaur head. <laughs> I also have a dinosaur head that I got from the Natural History Museum in uh, New York. So yeah, that's a, also a thing that I should mention. A lot of my shelves de are decorated with random knickknacks from like travel. So I have like this uh, little Viking ship that I got. I'm trying to hold it against my shirt so you can see it. Uh, I have this little Viking ship from Norway just now. I have, this, ooh, I have a mini Eiffel, the Eiffel Tower, like, they're just covered in knickknacks. Anyway, let's back up back onto the shelf. So the last row that you can see down here um, is mostly just muddled up shelves. This one, I just threw a bunch of books on there. We have Samantha Shannon, we have Akhtar, we have Adam Silvera. So some color coloration, I can't say the word, collaboration, col I don't know the word for it. Um, well, I know the word, I just can't say it. Some correlation, there we go. Some correlation down here with that kind of fancy magical run through, but three authors that I wouldn't necessarily put together otherwise. Um, then we have this one, which is organized. This is my high fantasy shelf plus fourth wing. I say that because fourth wing, I don't count as a high fantasy because it's not, but it does fit on the fantasy shelf. So um, yeah, so mostly high fantasy, you have uh, Lord of the Rings, you have um, Samantha Channon's Pride of the Orange Tree duology. Uh, you have Game of Thrones, so high fantasy down here. Uh, then this shelf down here is kind of one that I really want to expand in this new bookshelf era uh, because I have so many. But this is my translated fiction shelf along with my memoirs. And at the time when I first made this, they kind of fit perfectly together because it was just the right amount. Um, but now I have like hundreds of translated fiction on my book cart specifically, but also within this uh, stack. So I'm hoping that I can either have like a whole row of translated fiction or like one of these top two shelves up here can be translated fiction shelf. We'll have to see how many I have and how much they can fill. Um, but yeah, memoirs, translated fiction. Now I'm not going to move the camera because then I'd have to come all the way over there. Uh, but the, the last row but below this is muddled, messy books that are ugly and are half hidden by the book cart um, and the bed obviously because you can't see the shelf from over there. <laughs> so ugly books are like right down here then right down this bottom middle one is kind of miscellaneous books again I just threw them down because I had nowhere else to put them um, and then down here as you can kind of see is the three stacks of recently read books which we're going to get onto in a moment when we do the unhaul I'm nearly there um, but yeah <laughs> these are my bookshelves and I, I am really happy with like these three shelves upwards but yeah, I really, I, I need an update, I need a refresh, I can't wait to unhold some books. So I'm going to come over and bring you over. I'm going to bring you over and we're going to get rid of some books. Okay, so welcome back unhold people. Let's get into the unhold. I'll see you in a moment. Okay, welcome back to the unhold section. I'm kind of crouching right now because I brought you closer. But yeah, we're going to start the unhold section on these rainbow shelves because as I said, they're the most unhaulable shelves. So let's start straight away. Let's start with Not Here To Be Light, but it was boring. I didn't, it didn't stick with me. Then we have <laughs> The Cat and the City. Again, just didn't stick with me. Then we have The Salt Path. Um, 
it was it was good i would recommend it but i wouldn't reread it so i don't want to hold on to it uh, then we have instructions for dancing by nicola Hume. not particularly one of hers that i liked so far i've only liked the sun is a, also a star uh, from her so that i'm not going to keep this then I'm going to be getting rid of All the Light We Cannot See. I feel like this is going to be a controversial one because I know a lot of people love this one. But for me, it was it was enjoyable when I read it, but I remember nothing from it. And it's, it, yeah. <laughs> the next one is The Last Night at the Telegraph Club. It's just not one that stuck with me. I'm probably going to say that for a lot of these books. Um, the next one is going to be The Princess and the Pango, which I did actually enjoy, and I might post a quick review on Instagram, um, but I enjoyed it, but I'm never going to reread it again, and I'd rather someone else enjoy it. The next one is Jay's Gay, uh, Jay's Gay Agenda. It was just typical YA, nothing stand out about it. The next one is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue. It was enjoyable but it was too much like a Disney film for me to want to continue the series because there was no stakes at the end. It it built up pretty well but the ending was kind of anticlimactic and Disney villain-esque so I'm not going to read the rest of this series so I'm going to unhold this one. I'm also going to be getting rid of Geekerella which is linked to the, the Princess and the Fangirl. Again I enjoyed this one I'm just never going to reread it. And this one pains me because I got this one in New York from You and Me Books. Uh, check them out they're in Chinatown they're a really good bookstore. Um, but yeah Beaten Heart Baby I had high hopes and it pains me to get rid of a New York book because I kind of attach sentiment to books that I got on holidays but I'm going to get rid of it. It was boring. Then I'm going to be getting rid of Casey Smith Quiston's I Kiss Shara Wheeler. I liked Red, White and Royal Blue, but this one was just not it. Then I'm going to be getting rid of uh, another Yoon book, but this time it's David Yoon. I'm going to be getting rid of Frankly in Love. Not one that's going to stick with me. It was enjoyable, but yeah, I don't need it anymore. I'm going to be getting rid of Proud. I think this was in a previous unhaul, but then I decided to keep it. I, it, was, it was a good read. I would definitely recommend it, but personally for me, it doesn't do anything for me anymore. Um, I'm glad that I read it, but it doesn't bring me joy looking at it on my shelves. I just feel like, why do I still have that? But yeah, I definitely recommend Proud. It's an anthology of queer stories, but for me, yeah, <laughs> it's not for me anymore. Uh, you Should See Me in a Crown, another queer one. This is sapphic. It's really good, but it just wasn't for me. I, I can't remember anything about this book. Um, so yeah, then we have If This Gets Out. This should not get out. This should be locked away because it was boring and it really read like One Direction fan fiction um it, it was not enjoyable <laughs> at all uh, i just didn't like it okay so now i have some from the second row i just went and got them myself but there was a couple from the white shelf a couple uh and then one from this one that i'm going to be getting rid of and those are the foxhole court trilogy i just read these for my best friend um i've owned them for so long and it's criminal that i've only just read them now but i hated these so maybe it was like self present preserving i was self-preservation not reading these because i hated them i yeah i'm sorry i hate these i'm gonna be on hold like all three um oh goodness um then i'm gonna get rid of a very large expanse of sea by tahara murphy she's just not a writer that i enjoy um this one was better than the shatter me series but it's not one that really stuck with me i don't remember anything about this again i just it's left my brain because it was just unimportant um but it was I, I think it was good so i guess i would recommend it if you do like to hire Murphy. but yeah it's not one that stuck with me unfortunately i'm gonna be getting rid of another nicola yoon i'm gonna get rid of everything everything this one was so painfully predictable um i think at the time when it came out maybe it would be more like surprising but i just I'd seen other media with this twist and it, it was very predictable and ultimately was an underwhelming love story as well so it just wasn't for me and it's the movie cover so yeah uh, and then the last one is going to be kind of controversial because I know this one is a popular series but I'm going to be getting rid of Caraval or Caraval by Stephanie Garber. I read this one it was all right but I just don't want to continue the series it's not one that grasped me but it was an okay fantasy read. But yeah, I know a lot of people like this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, I have some more miscellaneous ones. So I'm going to be getting... So I'm going to be getting rid of The Ninth Path by Lee Bardugo. I have two copies of this. This is the regular edition. I have the Waterstone signed exclusive one. So I'm just checking. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be getting rid of The Ninth Path by Lee Bardugo. It's an okay duology. I'm going to keep it for now, but the spare copy can go. Then, as you probably expected, we have Akatar. I don't know if I'm 100% committed to getting rid of these yet because content, I might want them for future content, but 
they're definitely not going to be staying on my shelf. So I think I'm going to put these under my bed. They're not unhauled just yet, but they may be subject to being unhauled in the future if I haven't used them for a video. Um, but yeah, video, <laughs> video content, but they are on the chopping block. Then we have um, The Grace of Kings, which I bought recently and I was so excited for, but I was kind of missold on it and it wasn't what I was expecting or wanting from a book. I kind of wanted that Lord of the Rings, like friendship duo, uh, friendship duo getting through a fantasy world. It wasn't really that, so it's kind of disappointing. I'm going to be getting rid of it now. <laughs> Someone else can try it, but it wasn't me, unfortunately. Yeah. So this is kind of harder than I thought it would be. I thought I'd get rid of a lot more books, uh, but I have a little stack above me and we're not even touched that section down there yet. But the last ones from the shelves themselves that I got from this bottom corner that you can't even see are the the ones we're meant to find. That's the title, yeah. The ones we're meant to find, this one just wasn't for me. It was boring, which is a shame because the cover is really pretty, but it wasn't for me, it was boring. Then we have two TK... Uh, TJ Clune books. We have Flashfire and Heatwave, which is the second and the third book in the Extraordinary series. Um, they just went for me, which again is a shame. This is a New York book and this is a London book. So two travel books that I get rid of, but I'm forcing myself because I just, the main character is insufferable in these books and the writing is cringe. So yeah, and that's not purely TJ Klune. I am reading his other book right now, Under Under the Whispering Door, which I'm enjoying, but in this one the characters and the writing is just insufferable, so I'm going to get rid of both of these. Right, so, <laughs> my heart. I, I can see the mess behind me. Um, but yeah, I think they're all the ones from the shelves themselves. But I'm going to bring you down to the triple mess monstrosity of recently read books down in this bottom corner, and we're going to go through all of these, which is the bit, thing that I've been the most excited to do, because it's so messy. But yeah, they were the books on the shelves. So let's go down to this bottom corner. So this is the shelf right now. Um, it's a bit of a hard angle to work with because there's no room. My bed is right here. I can't get a better angle. Uh, but this is the shelf. I just wanted to show it. It's it's the, 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 these stacks and then there's two behind it on the actual shelves. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to get through this monstrosity. I'm so, so excited. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, we're gonna start with this stack and I'm gonna try and make myself some more room in this situation. So, in this stack we have Smash by Junju Ito, I'm gonna keep. Parsnips Buttered by Joe Lysa, I'm gonna keep. Uh, these next three I'm going to keep. Uh, Ghost Station by S.A. Barnes is a sci-fi book divided by three with Emily and Elizabeth. I'm gonna keep all of those even if I didn't like them because of sentiment. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep the Remembrance of Earth Trilogy, these are the first two, the other ones down here. Keep them, absolutely adore them, definitely recommend. Floating Hotel, divided by three, buddy read, I'm gonna keep. Abundance, I'm gonna get rid of because it was just not what I wanted. So yeah. <laughs> there we have Pumpkin Heads, I'm gonna keep. We have School for Good Mothers. I enjoyed it initially and I really think the messages behind this of kind of like the society's pressures on mothers and mothering and thinking that you can do better mothering than an actual mother. I like the messages and the critiques of that and I liked that it kind of showed that it's okay to make mistakes as a mother and like this horrible sci-fi future where people are so penalised for making the smallest mistakes. Um, like motherhood is hard. Let mothers do their thing. Um, as long as the child's not being hurt. But there was no child hurt in this book. <laughs> so there's good for good mothers. I'm gonna unhold though because it did get really boring and repetitive. Then we have Camp Hopper, gonna keep. Partner Track, surprisingly enjoyed. Soulmates, enjoyed. Another Junjuito, I'm gonna keep. Rubicon, absolutely loved. All That's Left in the World, I enjoyed. Sea of Rust, I enjoyed. <laughs> Red Rising, I want to continue the series. Nightcrawlers, really good book. This one's really good, definitely check this out. It's literally fiction, I think, um, yeah. And then we had the final book of this stack and the first unhaul, well, second unhaul, uh, The Prison Healer. Such a disappointment. It wasn't, it wasn't very good at all. So I'm going to be unholding that. Boyfriend material. This is a tough one. I don't know. I'm going to keep it for now. American Gods. Going to keep it for now. Spy Family. Like I said, I love this one. Things We Lost to the Water. I want to talk about this in a moment when I get to a different book. So I'm going to put this here. Um, Until I Met My Husband, a really good memoir of the first... Uh, legally recognised gay marriage in Japan. Definitely recommend this memoir. 
Then we have, okay, this is going to be a reter recurring thing, but I need these books for a different video that's going to come after this one. So I'm going to talk about these in that one. <laughs> then we have The Seven Moons of Ali Amida. This one's really good. Ascension, adored this one. Severance, really enjoyed this one. Worried the Wild, enjoyable YA. Mm, fantasy, I think I'm going to keep it for now. I'm going to give it a chance. Sylvia Marino Girl, so yeah, I'm automatically going to keep whatever she's written. I really enjoy her. Fake Dates and Mooncake, I enjoyed. Here we go. Here's an unhaul. This looks like I'm unhauling nothing, but just wait until we get to these stacks, okay? Um, Paris Dillingor is about to crumble. Insufferable main character, unhaul. Chillin' Effect, not one that I particularly liked, but I'm going to keep for now. The Inheritance game started off, I really enjoyed it, but then as I got further in, it got a bit more ridiculous and YA, and I just didn't like it, so on whole. Uh, the Floating Lights, it's a shame, it's Kazu Ishiguru, but I didn't enjoy this one, nothing stuck with me, it was boring, so I'm going to on whole. Then we have one for another video, another one for the next video, Three Buddy Problem, I'm going to keep. Um, these these ones I need for a different video. I'm sorry. Uh, Alice in Borderlands, like I said, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, in Memoriam, really good uh, World War One book, I think. Jinju Ito, gonna keep. Uh, oh goodness, I think I knocked you. The Art of Prophecy by um, Wesley Chu. Really like Wesley Chu's writing, so I'm gonna keep those. These for a different video. <laughs> Sylvia Marie, Marie Garcia. Okay, this one, I'm not sure. This one is Our Share of Night. I enjoyed the first part and I think one of the last parts. But do I keep the whole book? It's a really chunky book. I'm going to put it on the maybe pile. The maybe pile. <laughs> uh, Mallory, really great sequel. I think this one was a perfect sequel. Oh, goodness. They're all falling down. Um, The only ones left. Really enjoyed this one. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Uh, Station Eleven, really enjoyed. BTS Memoir, really enjoyed. Horror Store, really enjoyed. <laughs> okay, I will unhold more. Look, I'm going to unhold this one right here. I'm going to unhold Olga, Olga Dies Dreaming. I DNF this one, I couldn't get into it. Okay, let's clear up this. I'll be back in a moment and hopefully have a better angle. Okay, I have a slightly better angle now. I just moved all the books up a shelf so you can see them and I can actually sit down. Um, so I'm going to try not to be as rushed as I was a minute ago. Um, but yeah, let's start here. Um, we have three books in this little slot here. We have, I'm going to keep Assassination Classroom. Uh, this one I need for the, the next video. Glitterland, I didn't really like. It was enjoyable when I read it, but I'm not, never going to go back to it. So I'm going to unhaul Glitterhole. Glitter, Glitterland, not Glitterhole. I'm going to unhaul that. Death of a Bookseller. Um, I'm going to keep for now, I think. Uh, when Ghosts Come Home, it was a good read, enjoyable, but I don't think I'm going to read it again. I'm going to put it on the maybe pile. I liked it, but I don't know if I liked it enough to keep it. Then we have some more hardbacks back here. We have, so this is about after. It was, it was not a great execution. It was supposed to be like a story of what happens after a happy ever after. But that just kind of led to the whole friendship group feeling underdeveloped. Like they were all just friends and there was no development. And it was kind of boring. So I'm going to get rid of this. Blood Sugar, really enjoyed. Definitely going to keep that one. Immortal Longings, I enjoyed. I'm going to keep that one. Then we have Lap Nova. Hated this book. It was atrocious. I might keep it for my Worst Books of the Year video, but as of now, it's not going back on the bookshelf. It's on hold, but it's on, like, hold for that final year video, okay? I hate this book. Then we have Combat Codes. It was a Divided by Three buddy read, so I'm going to keep that. Um... Divided by three being with Emily and Elizabeth. Just going to restate that. Um, then we have Becky Chambers. Absolutely loved this series. It is the long way to a small angry planet. I took way too long to read this short series. Um, I really enjoyed this one. I'm going to keep this one. Oh, I love it so much. Um, then we have my George Orwell books box set. The other three are on the book trolley. So I'm going to keep these. Um, but we have 1984 and Animal Farm. The two that I've read if you're interested. Uh, then we have Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Absolutely love this one. Another buddy read with Divided by Three, so I'm going to keep that. And then we have these two. Wild and Wicked Things. 
DNF. It was a great Gatsby. <laughs> it was a great Gatsby retelling. I never read that, and I probably not after this because this was just boring. Then we have, oh, and I feel really bad about this one because the only reason I bought it was because I was meeting, I was meeting the author of this, Death, and I was getting this signed. Um, and this author was next to her and no one was going to talk to her. Like there was no line or anything for her. So I kind of just, she wasn't the same difference. So I had to go over and I was like, I guess I'll have your book. And it was a mistake because I don't like it. So I have a signed copy of this personalized to me and I didn't like it. But at least, at least she got the gratification of someone coming up to her, okay? I am a hero, okay? I'm joking. Um, then we have this little stack here. Mr. Magic. Oh, this one's a tough one because I enjoyed it in concept, but in execution, I was eh. Maybe a future unhaul. Maybe, maybe. Then we have Michelle Obama's The Light We Carry. Really enjoyed this one. Definitely love Michelle Obama's style of writing. I've also read Becoming. So, yeah, recommend her. She's really cool. Um, then we have Bin by Tyler Oakley. I purely just want to keep this because I want to build up my memoir shelf. And this was pretty interesting. I never watched Tyler as a YouTuber um, in the old days of YouTube when he actually posted. I never really watched him. But... I have his memoir and I read it. So <laughs> there we go. Um, then we have the book that wouldn't burn. Now I'm going to keep this for aesthetic purposes. I feel like it would look good on the shelf and I spent way too much money on this to just unhold it, but I did not like this book. But I'm going to keep it for now, just for display purposes. But maybe next year in an unhold video, you'll see it go. Then we have, um, I guess I live here now. I really like this one. It gave me XOXO vibes. Um, so yeah, definitely like this one. Abroad in Japan. This is from a previous video. If you saw it, I love you. Um, but I'm going to keep this one. Another ginger retail. I'm going to keep this one. And then the Heart Stuff Yearbook. I'm going to keep this one. Uh, then we have this this next stack. And you see what I mean? Like two stacks. And then there was a stack in front. It was three stacks long. I have issues. Um, okay, let's just take the top three. Four. Um, out of the Ruins. I'm going to unhaul, but I do need it for a video. So again, it's going to go on suspended unhole love you to lose me i enjoyed you it was in my one of my previous videos diary of a bookseller oh my god this man is insufferable he makes selling books sound so depressing and he is just an asshole i hated him this entire book and again this was a travel book i bought this in japan so it really pains me to unhold this one but the man is so unlikable why is the angle like that okay there we go um i yeah the man is so insufferable do not recommend it's basically a diary of a bookseller, but he is depressed, angry at everyone and says nothing nice and doesn't even seem to like books that much. Get out of my shelf. Uh, then we have another Tahara Mafi book, uh, An Emotion of Great Delight. I think I enjoyed this one when I read it, but I found it a bit underwhelming. I'm going to unhaul it. Then we have Talia Hibbert, uh, An Unexpected Enjoy for me. Like, I don't read this kind of romance but I read these for a video that's upcoming and I really enjoyed the Brown Sisters one but I think I enjoyed this one more. Highly suspicious and unfairly cute. This one was more enjoyable than the Brown Sisters series but this one is also really good. So if you're in for like a romance check these ones out. They have good representation in them as well of like uh, neurodivergency and stuff as well. And then we have the Shatter Me ones. Uh, we have the last ones here as you can tell from my channel i do not have the video up for this yet me and andrea are yet to film the review of these ones so i'm gonna keep these for now but these will be on hold eventually i feel like this has gone down again what's happening stay okay stay there next one uh we have oh a random shatter me one oh we just have wonder in the middle of them but here are the other shatter me books uh, I need to keep these because I need them for the video. Uh, Wonder, I enjoyed. It was cute. I'm glad I finally hopped on the Wonder train, but it's not one that I want to keep. I want someone else to read it. So, unhold. Gently put it over here. <laughs> then we have Memorial. I didn't talk about this one. This one's from earlier. Oof, this is tough. I'm going to unhold it, I think. It wasn't one that I enjoyed that much, but it was okay. It's just not for me. Maya Grant, get out of here. 
feed was terrible. The incest between the two main characters is not like explicit incest, but like they basically love each other that much. Um, it's terrible zombie book as well. Uh, Crazy Rich Asians, all three of the trilogy, I DNF the first one, it just wasn't for me. I found it boring and couldn't get into it. But I might watch the, is it a TV show or a film? I might watch the film, but the books just weren't for me. I'm going to unhold all three of these. <gasps> yes, I love these ones so, so much. Okay, the angle is definitely drooping. I love these ones so much. This is The Last Watch and The Exiled Fleet by J.S. Dews. This was my first buddy read, this one, with Emily and Elizabeth on Divided by Three. Um, just, just going to constantly name drop them. Um, <laughs> I'll leave them in the description. Check them out. Um, but this is our first buddy read and it was so fun. And these are such good sci-fi books. These are literally sci-fi operas, as it says on one of the front covers. They are so good. Highly recommended. This is this is my personality right here. Like Cavalon and Rake. I love them. I can't wait for the third book. The third book comes out on the 27th of October. And then we're reading it in November, I think. Um but yeah, I love these. I'm gonna keep these, obviously. Um same author as Rubicon. I obviously love Rubicon as well. Then we have I'm running out of breath. Um then we have this one. I'm just gonna start a new clip. Okay, I just need to start a new one because it was eight minutes long and it was too long. Um, Premonition Bureau. This is kind of talking about, it's kind of like a non-fiction about kind of the rising belief in premonitions in Britain after the, oh, what was the name of it? The, the mining incident in Wales where all the school kids died. It was after that. Um, and this whole book, it's named the Premonition Bureau, but we barely get any information on the actual bureau itself. So it was kind of wasted time, really. But I really like the cover. I really like the eye. But yeah, I'm going to unhold this one. It ain't give what it promised. Then we have Sea of Tranquility by the same author as Station Eleven. Coincidentally, I adored Station Eleven, but I DNF this one because it was just not very good. <laughs> it was not very good. It was boring. So I'm going to get rid of Sea of Tranquility. Here's the book that I wanted to talk about in conjunction with this one. Okay, so we have... On Earth We Are Briefly Gorgeous. Now this one is insanely popular, but I DNF'd it because I couldn't stand the writing style. I read Ocean Vong's, that's his name, yeah, Ocean Vong's other book, I Am Mother, his poetry collection, didn't like it. Um, so I'm not surprised that I didn't like this one, but I still gave it a go. Gave it a go. Um, but yeah, it wasn't for me, but if you did enjoy this one, or this one wasn't for you, try reading Things We Lost to the Water by Eric... Nungwen. Nungwen? Yeah, try this one instead of this one because this one tells the same kind of similar story of a migrant um, story and to America as well. So I think this one is better than this one. I think this one executed it better. This one is about a mother and her sons as well, similar to this one is a mother and son. So yeah, if you don't really like poetry and you didn't like this one or you did like this one, then try out this one, okay? That's that was the whole reason I was holding this behind. But yeah, I'm gonna keep this one. Uh and we're gonna unhold on Earth be a briefly gorgeous. I swear this angle, Jesus. Head you win. This was an unexpected delight. I have never read Jeffrey Archer before and I wasn't expecting him to be an author that I enjoyed. But I quite enjoyed this one. It was interesting. I had the concept of this guy fleeing Russia. Um and there's a split narrative of one timeline where he goes to New York and one timeline where he goes to London. And I just enjoyed it. It got a bit political at the end and there was a, a really direct tie to the real world at the end, which I th feel like it would have been better without. But I did enjoy this one overall, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that one. We have Bullet Train. I enjoyed this one. Not as good as his previous one, um, Three Assassins, because that's what it was called, I think. Um, but it was good nonetheless. I did think the film did it better, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> um, like, the ending of the film was much more satisfying than that one. Uh, then we have Fahrenheit 451. It's a classic for a reason. It's so good. Then we have If We Were Villains. I remember nothing. I just... It was boring. <laughs> it was boring and not for me. I'm not a Shakespeare person that much. So, yeah, I think it's more for... If you like Shakespeare, check this one out. Or if you like um, Secret History, then check this one out. But I've not read that and I don't really like Shakespeare that much. So it wasn't for me. Unhold. 
Uh, within these wicked balls was a Jane Eyre retelling, I think. I enjoyed it, but I'm not going to reread it, so I'm going to unhaul it. Zombie Apocalypse. Don't even call yourself that. What is it? <laughs> Zombie Apocalypse was written by 20 authors. 20 authors collaborated on this, and you can tell because it is not coherent at all. There are kind of th threads throughout, but it doesn't really mesh together at all. All the stories are kind of unrelated and because there's so many authors, you have so many like hit and misses as well. Like some are interesting and some are like, get over it, um, like get on with it. It wasn't good at all. And then the ending was so stupid. Um, I'm gonna spoil it, so double click quickly, but basically the zombies are real humans. Um, so yeah, that was the spoiler, but I thought that was so stupid. Um, at the end, it was. I hated this book. I really just want a good zombie book after. Uh, where is it? World War Z is the only good zombie book that I read and thoroughly enjoyed. I need more like this. So if you know, this is my petition to you to recommend me more zombie books, please. I really enjoyed World War Z, but this one was just not it. So, unhold. Then we have the final stack in a minute but we have the final stack of the one before that uh tom felton like i said i want to build up my memoir shelf this one he just needs to get over harry potter like all oh my days dude it's been so long and i know that's kind of an unfair critique because like his entire childhood was harry potter he was draco malfoy he grew up with the fame and the notoriety driven from the harry potter franchise but he just so painfully makes it his entire personality like this book is entirely harry potter or harry potter adjacent like there's nothing to this man other than his character he played as a child like get some more acting roles do something else and and now he's going back to the new harry potter he's fighting lucius malfoy like oh my god this man is insufferable um but i'm gonna keep it because i want to build up my memoir shelf and i he is a guy I'm interested in because of the Harry Potter stuff. But get a life, please. Get get something else to your life. That sounded so attacking. I don't mean to be mean. I was just, it annoys me. Camp Damascus, really enjoyed this one. I Someone I recommended this to uh, just got back to me on it. And it was so nice to see that they loved it too. So that was a nice feeling. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep Camp Damascus. At uh, the end we start from... Um, it's like a nice old poetry one. I'm kind of, I'm a split mind. Do I keep it? Do I not? I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool, but it's not one I would reread. And it has a white spine. So I think I'm going to unhurl it. I think someone else should enjoy this one. I recently watched the film with Jodie Comer in it um, the other day. The book's better. But the film was very artistic, but it was just slow. It was slow. <laughs> um, but yeah. I, th I think I'm going to let someone else enjoy this one. So this is a soft unhaul. I'm not going to throw it. Then we have one for a different video. The final stack we have here. Oh my goodness, guys, you're blocking my view. Okay, <laughs> then we have the final stack. This this is really cathartic. There's books everywhere. But this feels so nice to have this like deconstructed. Anyway, The Only Good Indians. Really enjoyed this one. This was a jailer recommendation as well. Um, so yeah, The Only Good Indians is really cool. I really liked it. This one's for a different video. This one's for a different video. This one I could talk about. Uh, Me, Earl and the Dying Girl. Absolutely hated this book. It was terrible. It was a whole in the Our Stars ripoff. Apart from it was told by the friend's point of view instead of the girl with cancer. Um, terribly written. I know this is banned in some places. I'm not sure why. But I kind of agree. No one should have to read this book. <laughs> it was not good at all. So I'm going to unhaul. This one for a different video. The Illuminae Files. I thoroughly enjoy them. Even though I don't agree with a particular author. One of the authors. Uh, on some of the stuff he's done. But I do enjoy the books. I'm going to say. Um, then we have Song of Achilles. I enjoyed this one. I'm going to keep this one. Then we have Razorblade Tears. I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I can't wait to read more by S.A. Cosby. Definitely recommend Raised Blade Tears. This was a recommendation from The Roomy Digest, Christine specifically. Um, yeah, this is really good. Um, then we have Bite Risk, which was a middle grade. And I kind of just read it because werewolves and the spine was cool. 
but I actually really enjoyed this one. It was cute and yeah, it was hindered by the characters' ages and the audience it was written for, but I enjoyed it and I thought it was cool and I think there's a sequel which I'm a bit confused by because this one ends very like completely so I'm confused where the sequel is gonna go but I'm gonna give it a go, you know? Um, so yeah, middle grade just randomly here. I enjoyed that one. And then we have, oh wait, I'm gonna keep that one uh, for a minute. Uh, then we have You're Not Supposed to Die Tonight. Love this one. I really love the final girl trope when it's like reflecting on the final girls, like the final girl support group and then obviously this one. Um, so when it's like, this one is basically set in a camp where they recreate like 80s horror movies with the final girl in them and then people kind of come in and experience that. I just love the kind of meta exploration of the final girl. So if you have any book recommendations with a final girl situation like that, where they know they're the final girl, they know about final girls and that kind of trope, please let me know. I really love the meta-ness of it and I really love the actual final girl trope as well and how it's subverted and explored. Um, but this one is really enjoyable and it has really cool spine. So I'm keeping this one. 100% keeping this one. Then this one, I just wanted to end on an unhaul, so I kept this one. Hate this book so much. Uh, Lord of the Fly Fest. I think I've rented about this in a different video. I can't remember, but I don't want to get into it. I don't want to get into it. Maybe I'll keep this for the worst books of the year video. I think this might be a contender for first place. But I hate this book with my entire soul. Wait, was this 2023? Maybe I did do it in my worst books of the year. Okay, check that out. I'll link that down below. Um, I think this might have been my worst book of 2023. I can't remember. But I hate this book. The character's insufferable. It's a stupid concept that's not... Well, it, it was a good concept, but it was terribly executed. Um, all the characters were not realistic at all. They were not real humans. You could tell they were two-dimensional characters in a book. My voice is going. Can you hear it? But yeah, I hate this book so freaking much. Okay. That was a bit aggressive. I'm sorry. I'll calm down. Um, but yeah, that was what I'm done. That's what I've done. I'm so happy with myself and my voice is going, which is ironic because I'm going to go see The Quiet Place uh, day one after this in about a couple of hours. So it's kind of interesting that I'm losing my voice when I'm going to go see that film. Anyway, I'm rambling for the sake of rambling. Let's show the tidy up of this shelf and what has been kept and what hasn't. And I'll get back to you with the numbers. Did I get rid of 50 books? We'll see. Okay. <laughs> So, my voice is coming back a little bit, um, but this is the end of the video. It's been so chaotic. I hope I was understandable throughout that, but here are the results of the final unhaul. Can you guess how many I've unhauled? Quick, leave it down in the comments, let me know you guess, and I'll reveal it in a second. But yeah, you can't quite see all of them. They're all of these. Um, so yeah, I managed to get rid of... Let me fix the angle. <laughs> 55 books. I beat my goal by five. And yeah, I feel very relieved. I feel like there could be another unhaul coming. So this is Future Sam just popping in. I actually found even more books I want to unhaul um, as I was reshuffling my shelves. It took me an entire day to get these sorted and I'm still not 100% happy with the organisation, but I did get loads more books to unhaul. So let's show you those quickly before we finish the video. So the first one is Hold Back the Tide. This is like a fun little horror set in the Scottish Highlands with weird creatures coming out of a weird hole in the caves. And it's really interesting. I would recommend this one, but I, I don't see myself rereading it. And hmm, I don't really like the spine. <laughs> um, so I'd much prefer someone else to read this. So I'm going to unhold this. The next two are some mem paperback memoirs. I'm going to get rid of the Tom Felton one because I was going through my memoir shelf again and it did become an entire shelf. But then I was like, why am I keeping memoirs that I didn't like just for the purpose of having a memoir shelf? Like, that's so stupid. Like, <laughs> don't just keep a memoir because you want a memoir shelf. My memoir shelf will grow as I get memoirs I like. I don't. I shouldn't keep the ones I don't like. Anyway, so I'm going to get rid of Tom Felton's one because, like I said, he just goes on about Harry Potter the entire time. And the next one I'm going to get rid of is controversial, I think. But this is All Boys Aren't Blue. For me, this just... It was interesting reading and I think it's important to read but personally I don't see myself rereading it and I didn't get any particular like fulfillment reading it like you normally do with a memoir you learn more about the person. I have no idea who George M. Johnson is before this book so I didn't gain any more insight on the person 
Um, but I'm glad I heard his story, but I'd prefer someone else to read this. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get rid of these memoirs, but I'm gonna get rid of David Attenborough's A Life on Our Planet. Now this feels like a crime against Britain because David Attenborough is a treasure, but I don't want this anymore because I was hoping this was like a memoir, but it's more of like a non-fiction, the world is terrible at the moment, we need to fix it. And I was like, okay, I understand that. I already knew the world's ending and it's all terrible. Um, but I wanted to hear about your life, Sir David Attenborough. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it wasn't a memoir. It was just nonfiction talking about the planet. And like, yeah, that's interesting for what it was. But yeah, mm, maybe one day I'll get the memoir. Also, the cover of this is really nice. But yeah, I'm going to unhold David Attenborough's book, unfortunately. But hopefully someone else will enjoy it more. Uh, then I'm going to be getting rid of this one, which I did bring up in the previous section, When Ghosts Come Home. I just don't think I'm going to reread it. And yeah, I think I'm, I should just pass it on. It's taken up room on my shelf that I needed for other books, so I'm going to get rid of this one. Then this one hurts a little bit, but I'm going to get rid of Young Mungo, and this is a signed copy as well. Um, but I just, it wasn't my favourite book, I wasn't that interested in it, and so yeah, I need to let go. One is another one I came back to, which was Our Share of Night. Like I said, just wasn't for me. I preferred the first part of the book. It's split into five parts. I like the first part, and I think maybe the fourth or fifth one, I can't remember, but when it was actually about the father and son on the run from a cult. When it was about that, I found it interesting. When it kind of deviated from that, I was kind of like, oh, okay, this is kind of boring um so yeah and it's too big i need the space on my shelves i'm gonna let 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 it go <laughs> i can't speak okay we may as well just continue with the hardbacks here i've got a couple more hardbacks so we got mr magic um bought this recently it was interesting it's a good little horror about celebrities from a childhood show and now they're all grown up and things are weird again it's interesting would recommend not gonna reread the next one i feel like is gonna annoy some people but jade city now this was popular a while back I think not like a while while back but a while back and honestly I do want to read this I haven't read this yet but I want like the normal sized paperback this is like a larger paperback let me see Ooh, where is it? so this is a normal paperback looks like it's just so big and I don't want it it's weirdly shaped um and I only got it for a pound in Poundland so it's not too much of a hit and someone else can enjoy it then I'm going to be getting rid of Spare by Prince Harry. This one's self-explanatory. Go watch my Worst Books of the Year from 2023 video. And then the other memoir I mentioned was Binge by Tyler Oakley. Like I said, I'm not a massive fan of his YouTube channel. I never really watched it that much. But yeah, I read his memoir because I had it. So yeah, there we go. <laughs> going to get rid of that. Uh, so I'm going to be getting rid of these two Samantha Shannon books. Um, she's recently... This is from... The Mime Order and The Song Rising from the Bone Season Trilogy. Trilogy, I think it's a series now. Um, but she recently rewrote the entire series. So I just don't see the point of keeping the old editions when I could just read the new ones. Because the thing is, I'm only going to read one set. I'm not going to read the new ones and then the old ones or the old ones and the new ones. I'm going to read one. I'm not that dedicated. So I'm just going to read the new ones and get rid of these old ones. I did keep, I do have the first one in paperback as well, but it has like an extra prequel short story in. So I kept that for now. But these two, yeah. The next two are also a pain to me to get rid of because I did enjoy them, but I just prefer someone else to enjoy them. And that is Pet and Bitter by OAK Amezi. Um... Yeah, these are really good. They're not necessarily my kind of thing, um, but I enjoyed them and I'd like someone else to enjoy them. So yeah, <laughs> Pat and Bear, I'm so sorry. This is The Poet X by Eliv uh, Elizabeth Acevedo, Acevedo, I don't know. Um, I, I've had this for years. I read it twice, I think. It was enjoyable, it was fun, I'm done with it. Someone else can have it. Then we have uh, Stephen Hawking's A Brief History of Time. I, I don't know why I'm holding on to this for so long. I read it, it was okay, but not one that I need to keep. Uh, this one, Hedgy Win. I love this book. It was a five-star read, but honestly, the spine is kind of uninspired. And I don't feel the need to go back and reread this one. I think I could easily just say Heads You Win by Jeffrey Archer. Everyone knows who Jeffrey Archer is. So it's an easy recommendation by mouth anyway. So I don't need the book. And I'm not going to reread it. So it was good. It was good though. I definitely recommend um, the Glass House, just don't think I'm ever going to read it. Pudding, just don't think I'm ever going to read it. Later by Stephen King, enjoyed it, don't think I'll ever reread it. It's an ugly spine and yeah, <laughs> I just don't think I'm going to reread it. And then the last three are a memoirs, 
Memoirs of a Geisha. I've had this for a while. I think my mum gave it me. It's again, it's a weird size paperback. It's, I think in America they call them the mass market paperbacks. Or is that what we call them here? I don't know. Um, I think that's what this is. It's like a short little floppy one. Um, but yeah, I'm, I've not read it. If I'm going to read it, I'm probably going to audiobook it at this point. So I don't need that. Then we have uh, The Mercies. I reread the description of this and it's interesting. It's set in Norway, which is funny. Go watch my Norway vlog. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just don't think I'm going to get around to this anytime soon. So I don't want to keep it cluttering my room. Um, then the next one is The Whale Bone Theatre, which my mum gave me because she bought it, read one chapter, decided she didn't like it and went, here you go, have this. And I was like, okay, um, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to read this. So I'm going to give it to someone else. Um, so yeah, there the extra books let me just count them and i'll get back to you so i just quickly counted and that is 24 books so add that to the 56 that was previously i actually i dropped the prison healer on the floor so i didn't count it originally so there was 56 from the previous one add this 24 that is 80 books that i am unholding <laughs> maybe i should get rid of 20 more and make it 100 and round it up but no i'm, I'm not gonna do that i'm happy i'm happy Technically, I do have next to me, I have all these Shatter Me ones that I will unhaul eventually. Um, so maybe, how many is here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 more. So that is 93 books if we count Akatar and Shatter Me, which are on like suspended unhaul. Um, but yeah, 93 books, technically 80. What, what can we say? I had too many books. Okay. Let's get back on to previous me or past me and we'll say goodbye. Bye. Um, but we'll have to wait and see for that. Um, but for now, we have 55 books off of the shelves. The ramshackle shelf that was down there that was like three stacks long is gone. Um, let me just show you that briefly. It is a mess, but it's a mess that I can organise. So I'm so happy that is sorted and that is gone. I can now meld that into the bookshelf. <laughs> um so yeah what else do i have to say thank you for watching this this is probably gonna be a long one and a fast one so i hope you kept up and you didn't leave i really appreciate if you didn't look at this hair um but yeah 55 books gone just like that oh i didn't do my transition right i'm gonna have to cut that now i did a transition i was gonna click and it was gonna be empty but i guess i could still do that you'll see it in a moment Okay, I just want to do this transition. Let's get this sorted, okay? Um, but yeah, 55 books. I'm so proud of myself. I beat my goal. And I am very much like a goal person. I'm very competitive. <laughs> um, so to have achieved that, but also gone beyond it, just makes me like feel very validated. Um, but yeah, there are all the books I'm going to be unhauling. Let me know if you have any disagreements with me in the comments. Are there any that you're like, no, don't unhaul that. That's like the best book ever. Um, I'm sorry if that is the case and I unhauled one of your favourite books, but we all have different opinions. Um, or let me know if you agree with any. I would much prefer to see if there's anyone that agrees with me on any of these. It would make me feel a lot better for getting rid of some of them. Um, but yeah, that's it. Leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, whether it was the bookshelf, the unhaul or both, I really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in the next video, which I already have planned. And there were some things in this video that will appear in that one. So yeah, let's call it a sequel. Anyway, um, <laughs> let's say goodbye. I'm, I'm stalling now and you can't even see the top of my head. There we go. Um, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.